Hi guys! I'm doing a quick video with alcohol inks on this um, stamp that I got from Blue Night Rubber Stamps. It is called the Park Bench. And when I saw this, I knew I wanted to do it with alcohol inks. So I made one here. And I like it, but there's a couple things I think I want to change. So we're going to make another one. So what we're going to do is I have the stamp already mounted in my Mini Misty. It's a rubber stamp, so you take the foam out. And I'm using the Marcos Paper Chrome Coat Cover. And this is glossy on one side and matte on the other. So you can see there, it's very glossy. Almost like photo paper, but this is not photo paper. And it is matte on the back side. And we're gonna put this in. And I think I had it almost all the way to the edge here. We're going to cut the excess off. So, Okay, and because we're using Copics, I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And it's best to use some kind of stamp positioning tool when stamping on glossy paper because it's a slick surface and you don't want your stamp to move around and shift your image. All right, and that came out pretty nice. Now, this ink is going to take a minute to dry because it is um, on the glossy paper. So I'm going to take my heat tool to it. And I know you guys don't want to sit there and watch that, so I'm just going to pause the video a second while this dries. Okay guys, this is all dry. How do I know it's dry? Because just like when you go and get your nails done, I touch it. And it's not smudging, so we're good to go. So I have a couple of Copic markers here. You can use any kind of Copic markers. And I have the image here, and I like to use this as a guide. And what I didn't do on this one was I didn't color the background. I had colored the trees, but not the background. So I want to give myself um, an idea of where, you know, the the background is because I think I kind of overdid it on the first card. So in this area here where it's blue, I'm just taking Copic markers and just filling in there where it should be blue. Now, what I like about this card is it does not have to be perfect. It's very artsy and it looks hand drawn, which means you do not need to be an expert at doing this. And you can see that I'm putting blue in the trees there and it doesn't matter. So obviously this is some kind of a lake scene. And I love it because I am a fisherman, so I could totally see myself hanging out on this bench. All right, so I just put some blue down there. And then the other thing I wanna do, which I didn't do on the other card, was put some green down. So anywhere you think that there should be grass, put some green down. I know the squeaking is kind of annoying from the markers. And I think I want a little bit darker green. Most of this is going to get covered up anyway, but you want it there as a guide. All right, so there is our green, right? Okay, so here comes the fun part. I'm going to take your Tim Holtz ink blending tool, and I am using the square one. And there are two kinds of applicators you can use on here. There is the felt applicator, which you can see is a thin piece of felt. There is the sponge applicator, okay? Two different purposes. The sponge applicator is what we use when we're using the Distress inks and we are blending. Now, most people, when they do the blending, have gone to the new circle applicators and the circle tool is this guy here. These are great for blending and doing backgrounds, and you could certainly do this 
um, but we're not going to be using the foam. We want to use the felt. And how that works is the felt just, this is just a little piece of Velcro, and you just put that felt on your applicator tool there. Okay. All right. So um, I want it to look like fall leaves. So I'm going to start with some yellows and oranges here. I want to do a lot of light colors. Some of these have names, some of them don't. This one's called butterscotch. And I'm just randomly just putting drops on there. These alcohol inks are very old, guys. These do not dry out. This one doesn't have a name, but it's like a sunshine yellow color. And a little bit of orange. And you just need a couple of drops. You can always add more. Now I only want one drop of this green. I'm gonna put it on that end. And I only want one drop of this cranberry, which I'm going to put on the other end. I want them on opposite ends from each other. Ew, it's a little juicy. All right, never fear with the mess. We'll clean that up later. You want to be using a non-stick mat for this method as well. I'll move my markers out of the way here. Now, I didn't color the bench or the trees in yet, and I will show you why in a second. And I have a scrap piece of paper here. So what I'm going to do is I'm taking this scrap piece of paper, and I'm just going to kind of line it up here so that it protects my water. And just kind of hold it in place and just take your applicator tool and just smush it down and you will see that those colors will transfer onto the cardstock and just have fun with it because that's what it looks like when you are walking through the woods they are all different colors just pouncing it and kind of rotating it and if you feel that um, You don't have enough ink, you just go in and put another couple drops in. It does dry very quickly because it is alcohol ink. All right, so there we have our trees and we have our water and our grass. Now I want to ink it again, but this time I want to add a little bit more green. And I'm going to throw in some brown on there. So this is called teak wood. Because I feel like when you're looking at the ground, those are the leaves that have already fallen. They've already started to deteriorate. I'm going to add a drop of this. It almost looks like the cranberry. I think it's a shade darker. I'm just going to add a drop of that. Or not. This one, the nozzle did dry. Oh, no, it came out. There we go. And let's see if I have any other browns. I wish I had like a lighter brown. Another green. This is called lettuce. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do it on the bottom part of the picture. And again, I want to use this and I kind of want to cover up some of my green grass area there. So where I have that grass, I don't want to be pouncing too much in that area. Don't worry about the bench. You can go right over the bench. All right, now I feel like it's too much brown and green. I want to add a little bit of orange in there. So we'll go in and add some of that. Maybe some more of the sunshine yellow. Just to lighten it up a little. All right, 
So we basically have a darker, the, the ground is a little darker than the trees. All right, I know it looks like a hot mess, but bear with me here. So now we need to go back in and just add the details. So our grass is colored, our water's colored, our trees are colored, and then the bottom's colored, but we need to actually cover the tree, color the tree and um, the bench. So I'm gonna use a lighter brown here. This is E57. And again, just gonna go in and sketch where those trees are and fill in with color. And these are Copic markers or alcohol filled markers. So they're gonna cover right over where we did our inking. And I'm just doing it real fast. You don't have to be a professional at coloring. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. I'm gonna go back in and add a little more green to fill in those lighter spots. And because we're on glossy paper, it moves. Now when your marker gets a little bit of that ink picked up, you can just rub that on excess paper and it'll take that off. Okay, now I'm gonna go in a little darker brown. This is um, E29. Same thing, just touch up some of those edges in the trees. Does not have to be very neat. This is a sketchy feel again. Some of the darker spots to the bench. Not being real neat here. This is a worn out bench in the woods. Okay, and then the darkest brown I have is E49. I want to use this to highlight the dark shadows on the bench. Underneath, the legs are. back in with the middle brown and wherever I think it just needs more shape more dimension clean those lines up I'll just go in there and do that okay All right, so no, we're not done yet. I want to heat emboss a sentiment on the top. All right, now for cleanup, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna move all these out of the way here quick. This is what's called um, alcohol blending solution. This is not regular alcohol. You could use regular alcohol. It would move the ink and lighten it a little bit. This just kind of moves the ink without lightening it. Um, this is, I think, denatured alcohol, which you can get at your local um, hardware store. But to clean up, so we set that aside to dry a second. We just put a couple drops of this down where you have your alcohol inks. And if you have any on your fingers, and you just grab a rag and it'll wipe up. That's why you want to use one of these non-stick craft mats. Okay, so that's all cleaned up. All right, so I have a sentiment over here in the Mini Misty. This is from Impression Obsession called Oh Sweet Autumn. So we're going to put this in here. And 
And what I want to do is I want to heat emboss the sentiment. So I'm going to take my anti-static powder tool and rub that over. And again, the reason why I'm using the Mini Misty is because slick surface, I don't want this everywhere. Versamark ink. Snip it down. Now I had previously used WOW Gold Embossing Powder, but I don't think that it really showed up. So I'm going to switch it up and use a different color here. This might be too yellow. This is new Wendy Vecchi Sunflower. Let's try this and see how it comes up. So new, I haven't even opened it yet. Oh, come on now. Let me heat that up. All right, now I just want to cut this panel down to five and three quarters which I think is the exact size of the stamp. Oh, I made it a little smaller, four and three quarters. So we'll make this three and a half then. There we have our alcohol ink autumn panel. I think it does look better in the sunflower than in the gold. And then just, it looks much better with the blue and the green in there. I think I have too much brown and green down here, but now I know I can lighten it up. Um, like I said, I can go in with the blending solution and lighten up, but just wanted to show you guys how to make a cute card with using alcohol inks. So I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, post them below. Thanks for watching. Keep on stamping.